In some forums, persons have noted that they are disappointed with the color that they get from PixInsight's spectrophotometric color calibration. For myself, I've found it a useful but imperfect tool since the beginning. Sometimes there are artifacts in the color that I don't want, and frequently a spectrophotometric color calibration results in colors that are faded, odd, weak, and unappealing. In particular, reds will frequently turn out a kind of pink like salmon meat. This could always be corrected in post, but it creates issues of its own. Heavy hue and saturation shifting can easily result in saturation clipping, which makes an image, especially in certain color ranges, look weak and noisy. And particular shifted colors will look unnatural compared to the colors beside them. There are ways to work all around this, but they're difficult and time consuming. Because of this, I continue to frequently rely on the older time-tested tool, Linear Fit, to balance the information of color channels before combining them. And very often, as compared to spectrophotometric color calibration, I find the linear fit tools give a better outcome. The reds are often darker and richer, and there is more obvious and beautiful color variation within an image. Now I suppose that it might be argued that the goal of spectrophotometric color calibration is to give colors as accurate to what the eye would perceive as possible. Though, I might argue back that, one, since what we're looking at is invisible to the human eye, that's a spurious argument to begin with. And two, since we often introduce false color, as in HOO and SHO and other forms of color palettes that we apply to our images, it's reasonable to shift the colors to make them more appealing. And three, I'm not entirely sure that spectrophotometric color calibration is always giving us the most accurate color. I just see too many errors and artifacts in it. That is not to say it's bad, most of the time it's very good and very accurate, and I use it frequently, though much less than I used to. In fact, these days, almost any time I make an image with a mono camera, early on in the developing process, I will make an SPCC color balanced version of it and a linear fit color combination version of the image, and then compare the two to see which one that I want to fully develop. So right now, I'm doing the pre-processing on VDB132, a large region of nebulosity within the night sky, rich in color due to the presence of emission nebulae and reflection nebulae. And right now on the screen, I'm just going through the basic pre-processing. I've already stacked all the information, which was shot early last autumn during a moonless night, and gone through Blur Exterminator, first in the correction mode, then the default mode to sharpen up everything and deconvolve the stars, and then run Starline in the RG and B channels using luminance as the primary, so that I could then combine the RG and B channels. One will be color balanced with SPCC, and the other will have linear fit applied to it. All the data remains non-linear, that is, the histogram has not yet been stretched. And the first thing I'm going to do is prepare the luminance channel. We're going to use the same luminance channel on both the SPCC prepared version of the RGB information and the linear fit prepared version of the RGB information. To prepare the luminance channel, I'll strip the stars out and then histogram stretch it. According to histogram stretching theory that I covered in a previous video, perfect histograms in 60 seconds, linked above. I find that it's pretty much always best to run the noise exterminator after the histogram stretch, so I'll just run the noise exterminator on the luminance channel and then save it for later processing on my preferred non-destructive layer-based photo editor, in my case Affinity Photo, though you could use something like GIMP or Photoshop as well. Now, I'm going to combine the completely linear information from the R, G, and B channels using the Channel Combination tool. As you can see, the tool is set to default values, and I'm just going to drag each channel into place. The output will have to be image solved and then the spectrophotometric color calibration run on it to get rid of all that excess blue and properly balance the color combination. With the RGB channel thus prepared, I used to use the LRGB Channel Combination tool to drag the luminance channel information into the RGB channel. But those results are iffy. Sometimes it just turns into noise. Sometimes you get a nice outcome with lots of good information there. But in any case, the process does not give me much direct control over the outcome. So instead, I'm going to later composite the luminance channel into the SPCC version of the RGB information, where I'll have full control over how the information is combined. Before that though, I'm going to extract and save the star plate and then use the exact same histogram theory to stretch the histogram on the RGB channel. And then I'll save it as a lossless TIFF. 
Now I'm going to prepare the R, G, and B channels to be combined by way of linear fit. The first thing I'll do is take a quick statistical measurement of the information in each channel. To do so, I'll open the statistics tool and drag the channel tab into the channel view area, and an analysis of the information in that channel will appear. What I'm interested in is the median information, and on the red channel, the median is 1.683. I'll then drag in the green channel tab, and in the median information is 2.401. Then I'll drag in the tab from the blue channel, where the median information is 3.969. The blue channel has the strongest characteristics that we are looking for, so it will become the standard, and the red and green channels will be pulled up to match it. I'll open the Linear Fit tool, drag in the blue channel tab into the reference image window, and then drag the process icon over the red and green channels. The linear fit balance channels are then color combined using the same channel combination tool. And once again, we get our RGB output, this time with a linear fit color balance. Immediately, we can see that the outcome presents us with much richer color than we saw with spectral photometric color calibration. Let's put the two outcome images side by side and compare directly. On the left is the RGB channel combination with the SPCC color balance, and on the right is the RGB channel combination where linear fit was applied to the individual channels. Now YouTube compression does weird things with images with low signal strength, which is often what we work with in astrophotography. So I'm not sure if via YouTube, you'll be able to see the subtle but important differences between these two images. If not, what I'll say is the image on the left, the spectrophotometric color calibration image, has a fainter red, paler blues, and weakly portrays the yellow brownish color toward the center of the image. The RGB combination on the right, where linear fit was applied, relates all that information a little bit more intensely. However, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. Let's pop over to Affinity Photo and see what happens when we add the luminance information and take developing further. I'll begin by dragging the SPCC version of the RGB information into Affinity Photo, and then I'll drag the luminance channel in, and it'll come into Affinity Photo as a layer above the RGB SPCC information. With the luminance information aligned over the RGB SPCC information, I'll now blend the luminance information into the RGB by choosing a composite mode. Composite modes in Affinity Photo are known as blend modes, but it's the same thing. The composite mode merely tells the layer that you are working on to carry its information into the layer below. In this case, I'll choose the screen composite mode, which tells the luminance channel to carry all the luminance information into the RGB layer below. Then when that's done, I'll select both layers, and they are activated, that is the white dot is beside them, meaning those layers are turned on. Right click the selected layers and select Merge Visible. This will blend the RGB and luminance channels into a single new layer. Once we have that new pixel layer, we'll operate on it. Curse tools will be used to draw down the shadows and enhance the midtones, improving the contrast and making the most of the dynamic range within the image. And a combination of curves and vibrance tools will be used to improve and increase the color, while the histogram is carefully observed to be careful to avoid saturation clipping. Finally, I'll add back in the stars by way of basic screen compositing and then send the image back to PixInsight for noise extermination. And then we'll do the exact same procedure on the linear fit RGB information. We repeat the process exactly, dragging in the RGB linear fit information, then dragging the luminance channel in above that and screen compositing the luminance channel onto the RGB information. The RGB channel and the composited luminance channel are then merged into a new pixel layer where curves are applied to enhance dark and midtone areas and a combination of curves and vibrance tools are used to enhance the color. Finally, the star layer is green composited back in over the image, and the image is saved as a lossless TIFF to be exported into PixInsight for one last touch up with the noise exterminator. Now, let's compare the two outcome images. In front of you is the SPCC image on the left and the linear fit image on the right with the luminance information combined with the RGB information with both images. Both images have been processed in the exact same way. And the outcome is evident. The SPCC version has the pale, annoying salmon flush coloration of the red regions. The blue regions are washed out, though its advantage is that the dark regions are nicely dark without any lingering green. The linear fit version has richer colors. There's more intensity to the reds, which can easily be shifted into a deeper, richer red. And there is better transition between the subtle colors of red over into the orange, yellow, brown, 
toward the center of the image, and the blues within the image are strikingly intense compared to the SPCC version. The flaw in the linear fit is that the darker regions have a bit of green to them. However, I can tell you that correcting that green is a lot easier than correcting the lack of color in the SPCC version. Correcting the lack of color in the SPCC version would be a lengthy process of vibrance and saturation enhancement, as well as HSL shifting, all the while having to be very careful to avoid saturation clipping. And even then, I can tell you, because I tried, it's not going to come out perfectly. While all that would have to be done to correct the green in the darker region is open up a curse tool and drag down the green in the lower regions. A process that would literally only take seconds. In fact, let me just show you just how easy that is. I'll just select a curves tool, go to the green channel, select the picker tool, click someplace on the image where the green appears at about mid-range, and hold the left mouse button and very slowly draw down until the green is out. Just like that. In fact, results like these have led me to experiment more and more between using linear fits and SPCC, and I have to admit that today, generally, I will choose linear fits over SPCC. I get better and richer colors with a lot less work using linear fit. Though, there are a couple caveats. One is that SPCC will give better RGB stars than linear fit will. So, since it only takes a few seconds to make either version, generally when processing images these days, I make an SPCC version of the RGB information and then extract those stars to put them back into the image later in developing. And then sometimes, only sometimes, I haven't really been able to figure out any pattern yet, but SPCC will give a somewhat better version of an image than the linear fit. And when that happens, what I'll do is I'll still make a linear fit version of the RGB information, and then composite the two images together as layers in Affinity Photo to get the best of the color output from both the SPCC and linear fit versions of the image. So anyway, if you've been disappointed with the colors that you get from SPCC, especially the pale washed out colors like you see in the left. Don't fret, you're not the only one. You can get more intense coloration, especially for DSOs like Nebulae, by using the Linear Fit tool. The way I use PixInsight's Linear Fit tool is like this. Use the Statistics tool to measure your R, G, and B channels. Find the one that has the highest median score. And in the Linear Fit tool, use the highest scoring channel as your reference. Then drag the process icon over the other two channels which will make them match color intensity with the highest scoring channel. Then use the channel combination tool to combine the R, G, and B channels. You can then develop the linear fit version of your RGB channels using your preferred workflow. For myself, I will export it at that point to a layer-based non-destructive photo editor, in my case, Affinity Photo, because there I have full control over how I'm going to composite the luminance channel onto the information and full and discrete control of every other developing process from there. Plus, I'm working in layers, which means I can adjust any layer discreetly from the other layers and make any changes to the image that I need to in a non-destructive and always alterable fashion. So I hope that helps, and as always, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comments section below. Have fun doing astrophotography and get out there and shoot that sky.